Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Did you know that not all golden books are golden book sized? Much like Shira and Everything But Happiness, today's book is larger than the average golden book but still came from golden books. As today we're looking at Rainbow Bright and the Color Thieves by Harry Cover. No illustrator credit. Hmm. Not even in the frame print. And quick flip to the back, just in case. Nope. Wow, Hallmark. Give the artist some credit. I wonder if it was... No. I wonder if it's... Could it be the licensee or could it be Golden Books, the way the licensing worked? No, the copyright is Hallmark. Hmm. One Spring Day, Rainbow Bright, the fun-loving little girl who colors the world, and her helpers, the color kids, decided to inspect the colors on Earth. They wanted to make sure everything was bright and shiny enough. Wow. Is that all of them? That looks like almost, if not all of them, it's most of the color kids. Pretty sure that's all of them. There's a lot of, a lot of different nationalities. Though, clearly you only really see um, one difference here. With Indigo, she's more Indian slash... Asian in tone, skin tone, and then we have Irish, though I must say they're predominantly um, Caucasian. And the illustrations are very similar to the show. I wonder if they used the show's artists to do this, and that's why it's not credited as a single illustrator. It's just the company, Hallmark, who took their artists and had them make this particular book. Could be. All around them were lush green fields dotted with violet and yellow flowers. Jolly red apples sparkled on the trees. Orange butterflies played tag with happy bluebirds. All's right with the world, Rainbow Bright exclaimed, clapping her hands. Sorry, I can't clap. I'm holding the book. And apparently I can't clap either. Uh, also, playing tag... I don't think the bluebird was playing tag with those butterflies. Probably something a little bit more, hmm, food chain. Probably. I don't think he's leaping high enough to do that kind of split. Blue is kind of doing a jump in the air, kicking one leg forward, one leg back, but he doesn't quite look high enough to have done that without landing on his legs doing the splits. And even though he's an athletic kid, I don't know if he's trained in enough to land properly without injuring oneself. But look at the cute bunny! It's a very nice image. Just look. Man, are the lines crisp. This is a little higher quality paper than your um, standard 89 cent golden book. Now, your standard five dollar golden book. Yeah, it's a hardcover too. So are golden books. Oh yeah. I always have this image in my head of them being kind of flexible. Well, they kind of are because they're tape bound. It's not an actual binding like this. The front and the back are bored, and then what's holding them, that golden spine, is more like a sticker. Ah. Rainbow and the color kids walked further. They stopped to pick some flowers. Suddenly, they felt a breeze. The breeze quickly grew into a wind. The wind grew into a noisy gale. Oh, there goes my hat, squealed Lala Orange. I must say, I really do dig Lala Orange's design. Just something about the way they did her skirt and overall choice of design, just, I really like. The other ones are like almost too puffy 80s. I mean, even Rainbow Bright kind of suffers from that in the arm category. Because everything was, you know, shoulder pads and puffs and layers. Just think about the 80s, like, everyone wears inner tubes everywhere on their body. My pigtails are unbraiding, called Patio Green. Help, there goes my warm-up suit, Buddy Blue cried. That's one heck of a wind. <laughs> how, the, how the heck? Physics don't work that way. Oh no, my hair ribbon, whispered Shy Violet, snatching at the air. Ah, Shy Violet, whisper. Yeah. These are really high quality drawings, except for the way the mouths are opening on the males. It's just, I don't think that's the way a mouth works. Anime 
attention. Also, the 80s. Red Butler's red cape, lifted by the wind, twirled him around and then whirled off into the sky. Canary Yellow's leg warmers disappeared in a blur. Again, how? Indigo's sandals blew off in a flash. Just, okay, I'm guessing because it's an entity, though this entity in Japanese hands... Enough gonna, said. Yeah. The fierce north wind began to blow even harder. All of the trees bowed over and the bushes shook. Then something very strange happened. The wind began to blow the colors right off everything in sight. All the tiger lilies lost their orange. Lala Orange watched in amazement as the orange blew away. Interesting. In this illustration, it almost looks like leaves are blowing away instead of just the color orange, but I can see how it's more like swatches as well. The frogs and their lily pads lost their green. Tears came to Patio Green's eyes as she watched the green sail out of sight, pulled by the wind. The blueberries and the bluebells lost their blue. Buddy Blue tried to catch the blue as it sailed past him. This is a very interesting entity. And just the illustrations, are, they're so crisp. And uh, classic tears. Shy Violet gasped as she watched the lilacs lose their color. Red Butler watched in horror as all the raspberries lost their red. That is definitely a, oh my god, kind of face. Though you would think after Buddy Blue and Patio Green were panicked about the bluebells and the frogs that they wouldn't be sitting there eating raspberries. Ah, uh, yeah, I couldn't quite tell what those were until I just said, yes, the raspberries. Mm. As they're losing their red color. Canary Yellow moaned as she watched the yellow leave the dandelions and buttercups. The indigo jeans drying on the clothesline lost their color. Indigo was heartbroken. Apparently everyone's going to be suffering some emotional pain in this book. Also, why aren't they losing their colors? We need the contrast. Uh. Also, plot armor. Ah. Come on, gang. Let's see where this terrible wind is coming from, cried Rainbow Bright. Follow me! Why do I want to guess Murky and Lurky? Because they're the traditional villains of the week, though they did not make an appearance in Rainbow Bright and the Brook Meadow Deer. No! Rainbow Bright and the Color Kids fought their way into the wind. They had to hold on to trees and houses and each other to keep from getting blown away. The wind got stronger and stronger, and the whirring noise got louder and louder. Sounds like a giant fan to me. Must be their biggest fan. Ha ha. Steven Universe joke check. So there they are, holding on to trees and houses and each other. Mm -hmm. All in a two-page spread. Yeah, you just, I really like her design. Just, the, I'll, I'll describe the, yeah. Let me speak before you describe the image. At last they saw what was happening. A huge fan was sucking all the color from everything. And there behind the fan were those nasty, gloomy villains. Murky Dismal and his sidekick, Lurky. You bumbling oaf, Murky was shouting. You missed the red shutters on that house. Yes, boss, said Lurky, and he directed the fan at the red shutters. Color was snatched off immediately. Ha ha, chuckled Murky. Soon all the colors in the world will be gone. No more red roosters. No more brown cows. No more green peas. No more rainbows! And, and what I was reacting to is the expression on Rainbow Bright's face. It is like the most sour of sour. Like, ooh, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. Also, I, I never got Murky's name until just now. Murky, colors. Yeah. Don't get lurky, though. I think it was mainly to rhyme. Yep. Also, Murky kind of looks like a, um... Give me a skin here. Uh, a dime store version of Wario. A little bit. Rainbow Bright stood up tall. She knew just what to do. I'll put a stop to this, she said. She touched her magic belt and a rainbow of star sprinkles burst out at Murky and Lurky. I don't remember them being stored in the belt. 
I remember them being stored in a pouch. That was on the belt. The belt buckle was for the rainbows. So look at all the colors. Man, this book must have been expensive to print. I even like the gradient they use for the sky here. It's really nice. Oh no, this is too bright for me, Murky yelled, covering his eyes. Me too, boss, said Lurky. Let's get out of here, Murky shouted, running for the grunge buggy. I remember that buggy. I wonder if they ever made a toy out of it. I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, I think they did. I may have even owned it at one point. Not me. I had Rainbow Brights, Starlight, obviously, and Canary Yellow. I don't know why my parents kept getting me yellow toys. I'm not quite sure. To go with my yellow bedroom, I guess. Mm. Oh, that's a very nice illustration of that. Lurky leapt into the driver's seat. Murky hopped into the garbage can sidecar. Drive, you idiot! He screamed. The grunge buggy began to spit and spew nasty smoke and fumes as the engine coughed and sputtered. We'll be back, Murky Dismal promised as the buggy roared away. We'll be back, Lurky's voice echoed. Actually, I find the smoke quite pretty in this illustration. Yes, it's rather well drawn. This is a nice two-page spread, though I think there was a little cropping on the stitching because Murky doesn't quite carry over into the left-hand side and his the rest of his face should be there. Yeah, I think what happened is when they printed the book, it got glued together because I think there's more in the glued spot, but I think it would damage the book to separate it. Because this one is glued much more than the other. And I was very carefully running my nail along it. And I got a little bit, but I'm not going to completely ruin it. You, you know what's kind of funny is the smoke kind of reminds me of soap bubbles. How do we stop the fan, Rainbow? Lala Orange asked. Look, said Red Butler. There's a sign next to that switch. It says start and stop. Obvious. Oh, you're so smart, Red, said Lala. If we all push, maybe we can turn the fan off, said Rainbow. Doesn't look like that big of a lever, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Also, I love the touch of that being a can. Hmm. You can tell by the beat-up lid, you know, because can openers used to leave marks like that. Oh. You know, all the jagged edges from actually cutting the metal. Soon the fan's blades slowed down and then stopped. The wind slowly died down. Rainbow and the color kids could hear the birds chirping and the bees buzzing again. Everything returned to normal, except most of the color was gone. I guess they had to go and retrieve it or use their magical color kid powers. Because it looks like they're already picking up and rebraiding and putting back on all their lost stuff. Buddy Blue is getting back into his jumpsuit. Canary Yellow is pulling on her leg warmers. Indigo has her sneakers. Violet's putting back her hair ribbon. Lala is redoing Patty's pigtails. Red is picking up his cape. And I do like how the illustration right here of Rainbow Bride is. It's a very nice rendering of her. Mm -hmm. Also, the tree is smiling. Oh, did not catch that. Rainbow Bright took charge. All right, kids, let's get to work, she cried. We have to bring the color back so the world will be a happy place again. Hooray, cheered the color kids. Lala, let's start with you, said Rainbow. Lala, Orange, and Rainbow Bright poured orange star sprinkles all over the tiger lilies. In an instant, they were bright orange again. I love how the color crystals never change the color of anything that they shouldn't. Like, shouldn't that have affected the grass? I guess they're smart color crystals. Now, Patty, let's do green, said Rainbow. Oh boy, said Patty O'Green. She and Rainbow Bright poured green star sprinkles all over all the frogs and all the lily pads, and soon they were sparkling green again. That is a very cute illustration of Patty O'Green. Mm -hmm. Rainbow and Buddy Blue made the blueberries and bluebells blue again. Soon the lilacs were their own perfect color. I also... Notice that Rambo Bright has a lot of hair. Yes. Because if you look at the illustration and you apply the how big her head would actually be underneath that hair, you realize there's a lot of hair. <laughs> it, it's like very, um, it's a beehive without being a beehive. The raspberries were juicy red again. 
and now everyone else has to settle for half pages. The buttercups and dandelions glistened yellow. The indigo jeans were indigo again. Now we can go home, Rainbow Bright exclaimed to the color kids. The world has its color back. That's a, that's a very cute illustration of Rainbow Bright right there. Mm-hmm. On the page with all the raspberries. Also, those two are, at, are eating raspberries again. What? what? <laughs> uh, apparently they taste good. Raspberries do taste good. Rainbow Bright called for Starlight, her magical flying horse, and he instantly swooped down from the sky. Rainbow jumped up on Starlight's back, and they all flew home to Rainbow Land. I don't remember that chariot. I guess I just need a convenient way to get all of them back. Yes, because Rainbow's usually only taking one color kid with her. Or Twink. And two is enough for Starlight to carry. Mm-hmm. He's looking for the price damage. Hmm. Yeah, it really is a mouse, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's usually somewhere near the ISDN, ISBN number. Mm-hmm. But apparently not this time. I guess they were maybe letting the bookstores actually decide. Oh, there were a oh, golden melody book. I wonder if that's the one that I have that goes with a record. Hmm. I have to rescue my record case from my parents, and I don't have a record player, so once I rescue it, I don't know if we'll put them on the channel or not, because I don't remember exactly how those work. I remember them playing and you reading, but I don't know if it would be worth it just to read the books themselves. Yeah, especially since audio is one of the big things that YouTube looks for to put strikes against a video. So if we dug up a record player, Playing the audio would probably get us um, flagged. I mean, considering just some of my drawings caused flagging. Really? Yes, original artwork causes flagging. And this has been Rainbow Bright and the Color Thieves by Harry Cover, Illustrator uncredited. But very nice illustrations. I wonder if it was a team. Like, when did the line work and stuff like that. It's just all nice and very consistent. Yeah, it's super consistent. Lots of detail, lots of color. Even when the color's been being taken away, it's just a pale version of the color. It's not the gray that they use on the cover to show the color being taken from everything. Oh, and I think the price tag was right there. But that would be a stick-on price tag. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the name of the store. They don't, they're not around anymore. Hmm. Start with an S. Ah, oh, but never mind that. <laughs> what did you think? It was fun. The illustrations were very consistent. And, I mean, it's Rainbow Bright. It's the 80s. You know it's going to be campy and over the top. And this read very much like an episode. You had everyone happy. You had an issue. You had Murky and Lurky behind the issue. And you had a resolution. I wish we could get a good team to come back and do Rainbow Bright justice. Because it's just the most modern reboot that Hallmark tried to do had good concepts in it, but I could tell like the higher ups were like, make this more for little girls, more, more. And like a lot of it got stripped out or they only had like, you have to write this script in a week. Yeah, too bad, but mm -hmm. at least we have the books. Yep. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this book, we'll try to find a link to it. I'm not sure how common, uh, licensed golden books for franchises that are not currently active are. Just feel like shopping? Yes, I'm doing an Ebates plug. It's my show. I'll do what I want. Uh, check the Ebates link. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Amber's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Gotcha, huh? I did it in a different order because I haven't pointed out that we have lots of other videos. There's even another Rainbow Bright book. There's other books that uh, touch on 80s cartoons. There are books that, I don't know, theoretically could have been popular in the 80s. I mean, we have She-Ra, we have The Biscuits, we have Serendipity books. I mean, come on, those are classic. I don't know how you actually define a classic. I remember a quote of it being a book that everyone praises and nobody reads. <laughs> but hey... So yeah, there's a lot. And then there's a bunch of pop culture stuff over on the main channel section. So check those out. Want to talk about the book? 
hey, comment section. Yes, YouTube still lets us have a comment section. Thanks again for listening.